Good afternoon, everybody. It is Leah and Ryan from Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions.com here with the Feathers Elite exclusive event. Take it away, Ryan. Wow, this is a big day today. I have to calm down my energy of excitement because we know how I get. I get really loud. I get really pumped up. It's like I'm watching birds come home from a race. But what are we doing today? We are doing a sit down, nice interview with the man, the legend, Xavier Verstrada. Outstanding pigeon man, years and years and years in this pigeon sport. We're going to, in this show, sit down. We're going to talk some pigeons, talk about how long they've been in pigeons, how they got into pigeons. And we're going to look at some of the breeders of the birds that we have in the auction. The sale birds, their, 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 their fathers, they're sires. We're going to see that all here today. Xavier, are you with us? Yes, yes, yes. I'm stay ready for everybody in USA. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. You're looking very festive today in your red sweater, which is great. Um, so, Xavier, question right off the, the top. How long has your family been in the racing pigeon sport? Yeah, uh, we started in uh, the winter time, 68. So uh, we are now more than 52 years in the pigeon sport, me and my father. You and, and your father? Uh, yeah. And from the first day, uh, we working together. And uh, yeah, in the beginning, it was uh, just sprint and middle distance. And uh, then, uh, yeah, about 25 years uh, middle distance and now the last 20 years we do it also uh, at the, the long distance but only the one day races yeah. uh, we have trying some uh, ex extremely long distance races but uh, we stop it with that because it's a total other blood uh, a type of pigeons and uh, you can racing only two or three times at a year with such pigeons and therefore uh, we race all round, but uh, only one day races. Well, only the one day races, and mm -hmm. and you have very very good success. I yeah. mean, you're you're very consistent flying. I noticed that. Um, I notice that in the birds that you send us, they're all very much alike. The bodies are a lot of the, the alike. I mean, when we were at your place, the, the bodies on the birds are very nice. They're not overly bulky. They're they're buoyant. They have that super nice feel, that nice forgiving muscle, nice forearm. Everything is just spot on. How did you guys refine these pigeons like this? Uh, yeah, uh, like I say, after 50 years, uh, we don't look uh, every time to the body. Uh, our, uh, our goal was always to buy a good uh, pigeon with good references, with good um, race results. And I have seen you have different types, small types, long types, bigger pigeons. Uh, but I try to find uh, the last 25 years especially all round pigeons and um, yeah also pigeons that I like I, I breed no pigeons for uh, for everybody else I breed only pigeons for myself and what I like it is that kind of type yeah? and uh, yeah for me the most important thing that we can see and, and feeling is the good feathering and for the rest I don't look to the eyes or, uh, uh, yeah, uh, for me, that is not so important. Uh, the, the eye sign or, uh, okay, most, the most of my pigeons, they have good eye sign, but uh, I don't look to that when I coupling or so. No, I'm looking only to the results from the pigeons and a little, sometimes I'm looking to the body. Not two big pigeons together, not two small pigeons together, but I don't look to the to the eye sign or etc. No, uh, only try 
good pigeons, but my reference is also, my, I select at 500 kilometers minimum, and that is uh, about uh, 380 miles. That is my minimum uh, distance where I can select the pigeons. 40, 50 years ago, uh, I like more the, the sprinters and, and uh, pigeons, they, they, they do it very well at 200 and 300 kilometers, but not more. But I have seen after, from the last 25 years, the really good pigeons, they make the first prizes also at 400 miles and at 500 miles. And those are the real champions. And uh, this is my selection when I buy some new pigeon or so, or I try to cross that, I'm, I will see always good results at 400 and 500 or 600 miles. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. It's not a lucky shot, shot when a pigeon winning at uh, 500 miles, the first prize. Uh, that's, that's always great quality normally. And I, try, I have, well, after 30, 40 years, I make selection because some pigeons make good race results uh, as a youngster. And uh, when they are yearling or old birds, the results are not so good. I try to breed a, a, a line, a, a blood line. They do it very well as youngster, but also as yearling and as old bird. Yeah. So that is a work from... 20, 30 years, really. Okay, so when when you're purchasing, let's say, a pigeon from somebody, from someone, and uh, you're looking for the performance, and you see as a young bird, maybe the baby, it didn't do anything. And then as a yearling, it did very well. As a, as a two-year-old, very, very well. Uh, yeah. does, do you... Are you interested in that pigeon, or do you want to yeah. see it do well as a youngster, yeah, yeah. a yearling, a two-year-old? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, 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 I like that. But I don't like it when they do only as youngster good uh, race results. Yeah? Because when you race with youngsters on nests or so, they can make an exception yeah, uh, some days, or, or they're sitting on eggs or they're sitting with small youngsters and then they do uh, a performance and, and after that they don't do it two or a third or a, or a fourth time. Eh? But when they fly good as yearling or as old bird, those are the really good ones. Eh? But we are racers, uh, really uh, fanciers. They, they will racing with every, it, all the type of pigeons. I race with youngsters, with all birds. I race with cocks, with hands. And from there, I make all the selection as young bird also. But it's not the big uh, reference for me for selection. When they do it over the 500 kilometers, then well. Yeah. Okay. Now, I had a question. With your young birds, how hard will you push the young birds? How far will you, will, will you race them out to? Um, how do you select them with the young birds? Yeah, we have about, uh, I cannot say exactly, 12, 13, 14 races. Uh, the possibility to race with them uh, from, uh, from 150 miles to uh, 400 miles. No, no, uh, 370 miles. That's the longest race. But we have... Uh, Four national races from uh, about 350 to uh, 380 miles. Yeah? And uh, I will see one or two times uh, a good result uh, at those, uh, those, those uh, national races. Yeah? Right. Or, and and you, you will, you don't, you'll take all your young birds out all that way? You'll, you'll take them out and work them multiple uh, times? Not all, uh, my, my oldest ones normally, because I have uh, a first and a second round, uh, and I have only, for my third round, sometimes uh, 10 or 12 youngsters more, uh, and um, yeah, those are normally too young, uh, but my first round, I race with them all, uh, normally, and uh, I'm looking also uh, to the condition from the day. Uh, uh, 
when a pigeon is not in the best condition or the feathers are uh, uh, they have uh, too too uh, too much feathers falling then i don't don't put them in a race eh? but uh, normally every youngster eight nine ten times yeah and the the hands i raise more with the hands than with the cocks because uh with hands you can racing every week with cocks uh when when it is uh, once over the the 300 miles it's better that you race them uh, every two weeks i think with hands no problem from there um, my suggestion is race with hands also young hands old hands and uh, you make a faster selection and then you make also uh, better results uh, in the breeding loft also uh, so you, so you believe you believe in more in the hens even for breeding? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, one of my uh, uh, most important things is uh, racing with hens, surely. And they are not so nervous. They don't fighting in the boxes. Um, okay, yeah. We say sometimes the, the men's are the strong, <laughs> uh, yeah, the strong I, types, I but... Uh, but it's for me. Uh, it's the the females uh, are the best ones. Uh, yeah, the hens are the hens are more consistent. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Now, yeah. now, now, with your young birds uh, for North Americans, because North America, a lot of people here they train very, very hard. What is your training routine, uh, sort of, with the young birds from start to finish, from once you wean them? Uh, right up to the first race and into the first couple races. What is your uh, daily training routine with those young pigeons? Yeah. Um, in the first three months, uh, I give uh, the pigeons uh, all the best foods. Yeah? Really the best, the best breeding food that there is. After three months, it's a 50-50 with diet, uh, uh, a low, lower... Uh, Corn, and uh, after two three weeks, they flying, they training better, and then when they training about 20 30 minutes, uh, and they fly uh, from 10 10 minutes uh, away from home, then I start with the private training, uh, five 10 15 20 kilometers, uh, and um, when they coming well. Uh, then uh, about 15, 15 times, uh, about 30 miles. And after that, it's not more the distance is important. It's more training from, from the head, training from the orientation. And that is most important. And right. uh, maybe the important is also the first two times uh, – be very careful with the youngsters because they are nervous. Eh? They're sitting the first time in the basket, that's so. And uh, yeah, then I do about 10 to 15 times uh, 30, 40 miles. Uh, and from there, they can fly every race, I think. And uh, when, uh, start, when we're starting the races, Sometimes I uh, make a, a private training race, uh, but years ago I do it also at 50, 60 miles. Now I, uh, I stop it when not farther than, than 30, 30, 40 miles. And that's the maximum distance. I think it's not the muscles you must training, it's the orientation, the head that you must uh, training. Eh? Most important, I think. And... Uh, maybe also a good advice is start very quickly uh, when they are about three months old, starting with a small uh, private training. That's, I, I can make the same like with the child. Uh, when a child go uh, to the school the first time when it is uh, five or six years old, that is too late. You must... Really, when, uh, when a child is four years, he moves directly to school and they learn very quickly. And we see it. Uh, I, I'm 65 years old and uh, I have sometimes problems with the computer. Eh? And you see young guys from six, seven years old and, and 
and they, they play with computers yeah, like like a professor, yeah, like we say. Yeah, and uh, I think like uh, with young pigeons, starting very quickly with, uh, with, with training, but not so far away. Five or maximum ten miles, it's more than enough. But they learn very quickly and uh, that's it. Then you have no problems when there is uh, sometimes a bad weather or, or so, or a catastrophe, they're coming back. Yeah? Uh, of course, you can have problems with, uh, with the wild birds or with the how. Yeah? Uh, I think maybe in, in North America is, is the same problem sometimes. Yeah? Uh, okay. And, yeah, but and, and exactly what you're saying, uh, it's like for people listening, what Xavier is really saying is imagine right now you're 30 years old, 40 years old, or 50 years old, or 60, and trying to learn how to ride a bicycle. When you're four years old, you learn to ride a bicycle like this. Very common yeah. sense. Now, yeah. uh, another question I have is what is your health program with your young pigeons or your race birds or your breeders in a season? How do you, how do you set the birds up on your health program? Uh, yeah. Um, now I think it's about in the last four months, I gave nothing on this moment, yeah? but we are now it's by us also winter time. Uh, what I shall do is, um, I, I tell you first something else. Uh, okay. I raised now about 50 years with, uh, with the pigeons. And uh, when my father was on the head of the loft, uh, then that was normal that we, we give uh, many times at the year um, a program to anti-trichomonas, anti-cancer. Eh? Right. Now, the last five years, I don't do that anymore. Yeah? So uh, there was one time I, on, uh, I was on the head of the loft. Uh, I say we, we try to make something else. And uh, I give only when the veterinary say, OK, there is now a problem yeah, with trichomonas or so. Yeah? But uh, like I say, 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, that was normal that we give four or five times at a year anti-trichomonas. That was <laughs> that was normal and, and sometimes more. Eh? And uh, we stop it with that. My breeders, they have nothing, really nothing, just uh, the, uh, the injection to paramixo. Yeah? And I make also control. Eh? But uh, normally, uh, when you, you give nothing to uh, anti um, uh, there is a possibility in the middle of the year that I have uh, I, that I have a positive uh, for, for trico, and then I give a product. Yeah? Mostly it's uh, Flagil or um, Ronidazole. Eh? Yeah, Ridzol. That's yeah, right for yeah, canker. Uh, uh, Ridzol, yep. eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, now the veterinary comes to my house before we must go to the vet. And, and that was not a good system for me because, uh, yeah, that's too, too, too far away. And, and that was also not good. Um, for the health is uh, with the young birds, I can say I have very good results this year with... Um, uh, Paramixo and Rota virus injection. Yeah? Yep. Those Rota, yeah. Uh, it's the first year that I have no problems with my young birds. Yeah. Before the last ten years, every year I have one or two or three weeks problems with my youngsters. But uh, this year I give the injection uh, combination and uh, combination Rota with uh, Paramixo and. I have no problems. Only one time, maybe a uh, youngster disease that you say, or uh, uh, but that was only a question from one or two days, and then I gave nothing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, with my old birds, uh, also the same. But with my old birds, I give 
I'm looking just before starting the race. Uh, if they have nothing, okay. Otherwise, four or five days anti trichomonas. Eh? Uh, mostly, when it is possible, over the corn. Yeah? Because over the corn, they have every uh, powder, they have it inside the body. And when you do it in the water, Sometimes 50% from the water, uh, you, they don't drinking and, and yeah, one pigeon uh, drinking more than the other ones. Uh, uh, yeah, for the rest, uh, yeah. If the veterinary say, or I see it, uh, they have a problem with the head, then I give also a product from veterinary. Okay. So, yeah. So so, so you'll even put the, the, the medication, you'd rather put the medication on the feed? Uh, when it is possible, because I have seen that um, pigeons, they have a very good taste. Eh? And uh, when it is no clear water, sometimes uh, that is, if you come by me and I give you a glass of water with vinegar, a small <laughs> spoon of vinegar inside. You don't drink a second time water in my home. Yeah? And yes. with the pigeon, yeah, maybe you must trying the the roni dazol. You must trying for yourself. Yeah, uh, because sometimes if I give a tablet, a tablet, and a quarter of a tablet, and I put it here between my lips, mm -hmm. uh, and and after that I say, oh, that's just. The taste is, is so yeah bitter. Bitter. Yeah, I don't know. Bitter. <laughs> bitter. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's so, right. Yeah. So it's for a pigeon just the same. Yeah. And if I give something in the in the water, I, I give extra honey or um, sugar. Um, yeah, to rest. mask to, to mask the flavor to hide the yeah, flavor. Yeah, 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 for masking. Yeah, yeah. but uh, therefore it's better that you give it over the corn. They have hungry the pigeons and everything is inside and uh, yeah, I think that is the best way. Huh? Very, very interesting. Now, uh, with I had a couple questions come in, but I'm just going to hold off on them for a second. With the young pigeons, will you treat them for anything before the races? Uh, sorry, the young birds. What? Uh, before the race, yeah, normally um, that's possible. Is if uh, they don't training at house at home, uh, then I give them uh, a product. Yeah, but this is first. That is the veterinary. Veterinary, they say, oh, they have a problem. Yeah, but mostly then it's coccidios or trichomonas or. Uh, something for for uh, for the head. Yeah, uh, that is also possible. Yeah? Uh, Respiratory. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. that is not so possible. Yeah? But uh, I I I give it not blind. Yeah. No. You understand me? Yeah. And uh, but when they training good around the loft or they go for five or ten minutes away from home, yeah, then you have normally no problems. Yeah? Uh, so. So, so for, for people listening, Xavier's using so simple common sense. Watch the pigeons, look at the pigeons, see how they're reacting. You don't have to medicate if they're, they're telling you and they're showing you they're exercising and they're feeling good. And again, when you do medicate, remember, uh, some of these products, they don't taste good. It's common sense. If you're putting it in the water, you might want to mask the water with some honey, sugar, uh, certain things. And very, very smart. Very smart. Now, Leah, I believe we had a question from Neil. Um, yes, we have a uh, question from Neil with regards to training. And he asks, if Xavier, do you see any value in compass training? In what compass training? Compass training. Ryan, do you know what he means? Compass training. Oh, yeah. Training? Um, yeah I, it's the first time that I heard it from compass training. I think that you uh, you make training races from every direction is that uh, yeah yeah i think i think uh, that i think that's what he's asking yeah 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 uh, i think that's that's a good point when it is not so far away 
uh, only 20, 30 miles from home, I think it's very good because uh, it is also in the middle of the season. Sometimes you think the pigeons must coming from the south and you're looking always to the south direction and they surprise you. They're coming from that side, eh? from, from north. Uh, yep. uh, we, we have that 50 percent of of the race time eh, that they coming from a uh, other direction eh? and uh, when you make uh, compass training where you say that is very good because they that is a wake up for for the pages i think i do it also uh, but not specially but because uh, when i go shopping to to a total other direction eh, for, for, with my wife or, or we, we go one time uh, for a few hours uh, um, on yeah, what we say free time eh? and yes. I move to a total other direction then sometimes I take my pigeons eh, or, or some pigeons and I let them out and that is good uh, compass training is very good sure uh, don't do that always the same uh, direction. I, for us, it's good because we have a big motorway direction to French. Yeah? That is good. So normally we take the big motorway and yeah? that is easy, that is fast. But uh, some, some guys, uh, they go to the work, uh, workplace yeah? and the workplace is the total other direction. Then my advice is take your pigeons, let them out. They come to, to the loft and, and the direction is not important. Uh, from there, uh, compass training, <laughs> it's good, really. I'm sure. That, that's a great, great question. Uh, how do you, do you prefer overall, do you think better is loft flying or training in general? Just around the loft is best? Or training? What do you prefer? Uh, training, short training. Short. It's better. It's better uh, twenty minutes training than twenty minutes around the loft because around the loft you train the muscles, but that is not important. You must training the head, the orientation. That is important. All the rest, uh, uh, yeah, the muscles. Okay, that comes from. From self, yeah, uh, but uh, it's better private training, sure. 100%. Okay, A another question for you, uh, Xavier. Uh, what? Uh, sorry, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Ryan. But yeah. when your pigeons, when your pigeons in the really best condition, they make compass training, compass training from themselves because they go ten minutes left, they go ten minutes right, they can, yeah. You understand me? They make Boy. from themselves training, so then it's not necessary to make uh, private training with your car. Eh? Yeah. So when when you're when you're when your pigeons are are when you let them out and they go for maybe a half an hour or oh. one hour loft around the loft and they disappear and come back and What's disappear that? and come back. Ten, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Go. Eh? I like that. That's as good. It's more than enough. Eh? Um, and I have seen also the hands for, for uh, you can training with the hands. That is no problem. Normally 20, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But sometimes with cocks, that is a problem. Uh, and they, they fly 15 minutes, a whole hour, but not more. But with the hands, when they have the best condition, no problems, 30 minutes or longer. Eh? So yeah. then it's not necessary. Then it's not necessary to make private training. Yeah. No, and, and you and you like it when you let them out and you see them disappear for ten minutes and yeah. come back and then they go another direction ten yeah. minutes and come back. Yeah. This is what he. Yeah. This is what Xavier's saying. Uh, but, watch uh, the birds when you let them out. <laughs> yeah, but don't ask me what is the key for to make uh, private uh, to to make uh, training from thirty minutes uh, that they go. That is just a question of condition yeah, from the patients. Uh, yeah. Another, right. another question I had for you, just uh, uh, your thoughts. What's your thoughts on one loft racing? 
Yeah, um, I have I have done that uh, this year uh, at uh, one uh, one lost race in Portugal, and uh, I have also uh, I was successful. That was a race from uh, the end. Race was I have no idea about four hundred kilometers. That is, uh, yeah, 280 miles. Uh, but I was satisfied because Portugal, normally it's 10 degrees warmer than here by us in Belgium. Yeah? But always good weather. Um, just um, on the entries, it was extremely uh, uh, wind from, from, uh, from backside. And uh, it was with high, sp high speed race and and i don't like that yeah uh, but yeah you like uh, you like a tougher I, race yeah but uh i have extremely but also extremely good references from fans as they are winning one loss races in the last two three years i can give you some names uh and from some uh from some famous uh, one loss races you have the pattaya race in uh, Thailand, yeah, uh, that was uh, this year, and um, that was in January, and uh, the first prize that was also from Mr. Hagemuller, and uh, he winning with uh, fifty percent. That was combination Koopman, and uh, with uh, a direct uh, pigeon from me, and that was combination extra with Olala, yeah. Uh, also, uh, two years ago in um, Hong no, at the Black Sea race, yeah. Yes. Also, the same combination, first prize, and that was also the same combination extra with uh, Olala. Uh, now um, I can tell you. Um, wait a moment. Uh, what was his name? Sorry, uh, I'm just looking here in Romania. Yeah, those are also uh, races from uh, 500 kilometers with young birds. That is uh, 350 miles. Yeah. Yes. For me, yep. for me, the best distance. Then you can really make uh, a good selection yeah? because I don't like the hot spots races in the beginning or typical for sprint pigeons and. Um, I have a total other idea about sprint pigeons. Uh, we know all, yeah, now you have famous pigeons like uh, Kittel and, and et cetera. But in Belgium and also in the one loft races, you don't see that when it is uh, 350 miles or more, you don't see the Kittels, I think. Yeah, you lose them all. They are not strong enough. And uh, I like more a type of pigeons, they are really strong and, and they do the one day races. Eh? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, you know, I, I know your birds here in North America. I've heard from lots of top flyers. The uh, Xavier pigeons are, are, are dynamite in the one loft races. And they, they talk about the, them being so dynamite when it gets down to the end, the 500, a uh, 550, 600 k kilometer races with those young birds. And, Getting into these lots here, which we're going to start to talk about, you can totally feel why these birds exceed so well, the way they're built. Um, Leah, I guess we're going to start off talking with lot number one. Yes, I think we'll start off with lot number one. I know Xavier has some breeders that he's going to show us from the lots. So, or whoever you'd like to start with, Xavier, I'm fine. You just let me know who we want to talk about first, and we'll follow your yeah. lead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I take uh, the father from lot number one. So that is uh, champion two. The pigeon is um, champion two. Yeah. This is... Uh, the father from oh yeah you have them i see on the <laughs> photograph yeah, oh, yeah yeah perfect maybe you see uh father and son yeah so there we go so uh, we are now looking at uh the breeder this is the sire to your lot number one and lot number two in our feathers leap pigeon auction running right now ryan is holding lot number one and xavier is going to show us the sire which is champion two 
Yeah. And uh, Xavier, why don't you tell us tell us a little bit about um, Champion yeah. Two? Oh, the father. Yeah. Um, first of all, Champion Two is a famous breed by me. Uh, he is original from uh, Chris Habraft, uh, my best friend, all more than 30, 40 years. Yeah. Um, he is really. Um, a friend and also my father and Chris Hebrecht, his father, are two closest friends. And uh, I can tell you, Champion 2 was second national ace bird from Belgium, long distance. Um, he winning first prizes from the most at uh, 300 and 400 and 500 miles. And uh, it's a type, not big, not small, the really middle type. Uh, and uh, especially those pigeons, they can make age from 30, 14 years old, no problem. Uh, the, the grandfather is also still alive, but he don't produce, but he is now about uh, uh, from 93, uh, from, uh, from uh, sorry, sorry, from 2001. So he is 19 years old. Yeah. Um, and uh, I cross that with uh, with my Castar line. Uh, Castar is uh, a son of uh, Top Star. Uh, what? Sorry that I say I mix maybe uh, some things, but champion. That is uh, Hebref with uh, fifty percent the old bloodline from Verstraten from my father, and uh, the grandmother was the Barcelona hen. She winning first prizes from two hundred miles from 300 miles, from 400 miles, and one time from 600 miles. So that is really specially. Uh, that was the 3010 from, eight, uh, from uh, 85, and, and really a round pigeon. And uh, I think you have there the pigeon in your hand. I have here the father. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's totally the same. Ex Xavier, that, that yeah. pigeon and this pigeon are identical. You can just see it. He's just older. He looks super in the hands. I mean, these two are spitting images of each other. And again, uh, people, if you're listening, do you hear the winning in these birds? They're out. They're absolutely out of this world. Lot number one. Do not pass up the opportunity. You are seeing the father in the video on your, on your monitors, on your screens, on your phones. That's pure class right there. The very, very best. All right. Also, um, lot number two is also the same sire. And Ryan, why don't you bring... Oops, sorry about that, Xavier. I lost you there. I put up the wrong photo. There we go. Why don't we bring up uh, lot number two, Ryan, as well? Because uh, very similar as well in lot number two. There we go. Mm -hmm. So lot number yeah. one, it's a cock, and lot number two is a hen, same sire. Mm -hmm. There we go. This is daughter champion two. And you see yeah. the she sire right there. Xavier has in his hand. Uh, I'm, I'm sure those hen is not too big, I think, because uh, the mother is also from the small racing type. Yeah? Uh, but I'm crossing many, many times uh, the champion line with the line from Topstar and especially with Castar line because Castar line are the really first prize winners. I have uh, uh, two famous sisters, 179, 180, also this year again, very good uh, racers. And this is also champion with Castar line. Uh, so I think the buyer from those hands, uh, he have a lot of chance to make success uh, with this combination. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, this hen is very, very small. She's a little bit different than 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 the the brother. Uh, definitely smaller, but real, real nice. Super soft, silky feathers. Lots of fight to these pigeons, but still very intelligent. You hold her up; she just she just looks all around. Very alert. Very nice pigeons. These lot. One and two, and Xavier, that cockbird is absolutely spectacular. I think uh, while we move on to the next breeder, I just have some comments here. Um, we have a comment from Stefan Hagenmuller, 
And he says, my best pigeons to one loft races. I have one with Xavier. Thank you very much, Xavier. So that's a comment from Stefan. Um, also, I have a question from Ant Bar Loft. And Ant Bar Loft is asking, Xavier, do you breed in open loft or individual sections? Um, I, for a part open loft and for a part in sections, uh, I have uh, about uh, five uh, boxes where I can put uh, the, my best cocks. Normally, I put them in a box, yeah? and sometimes I'm changed from uh, from partner, and then I, I put them in uh, an aviary or so yeah? uh, in summertime. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's fifty fifty. Yeah. Uh, 50%, no, it's not 50%. I have uh, 33, uh, uh, 33 couples, breeders, uh, and, and only five or six sitting in, in boxes. Uh, and and, and so again, from, when, yeah. when, sorry to interrupt you, but when we were at Xavier's, we went, we seen the individual couples that he had. Uh, it's exactly what he says. You go up into his breeding loft, it's open. The breeders have so much room. Uh, it's like a big playground. It's perfect. He's got the nice big Averys. I'll tell you, there's no overcrowdedness. It's just, you can just see in Xavier's loft, when you go into it, all the pigeons, I say, are very happy. Very happy the pigeons look. You just feel it. Nobody's, uh, nobody's crammed. Uh, everyone has lots of room to move. And uh, that's one thing I really noticed. Can I say something that I forgot in uh, lot number one and lot number two, the pigeons from the champions? Mm -hmm. um, you, everybody, they know Gabi van der Nabele. Uh, Gabi, they buy uh, about uh, seven, eight years ago, also a daughter of the champion from Chris Abra. And he winning with that combination, eh? Gabi Blut with. Uh, um, with the daughter from champion, he winning the second prize in uh, the one loft race in uh, South Africa, in the one million dollar race. And that was again, Van der Nabele with, uh, with the champion line. Yeah? So yes. Uh, yes. When, when also Gabi buy their pigeons and he did make those combination and he is very successful yeah? when you're winning in the final, in the final, yeah, the, the second prize from the one loft race, that is also a, a big uh, a big reference. Eh? From there, uh, the combination from champion is really very good. Eh? And like I say, it's for a part our old bloodline from 30, 40 years ago, when my father breeding together with, uh, with the Hebrecht. Then, eh? Okay, uh, maybe I can... Uh, Maybe we, we talk later from that, but uh, you know enough, um, the national winners uh, from the top star line. Maybe we talk later when, when we have the typical top star line, uh, but in lot number one, lot number two is also 50% top star line. Yeah? So yeah. also yeah. important. Yeah. It's okay, absolutely. number three. Lot number, number three. three. Uh, Number three. Let's yeah. bring up number three. And do you have the cock there from uh, the sire for number three? We will put his photo up. L this ladies is... and gentlemen, where do, you, where do you go to bid? FeathersElitePigeonAuctions.com. Leah, go ahead on, on lot three. Lot three is Sun Last Maxim. Uh, Ryan's got the lot there. And Xavier, who do you have there to show us? This is uh, also Last Maxim. Yeah, you see him here. This is the father. Um, he is son of the national winner Extra. But for me, more important is he is a son of my Maxima. And uh, maybe Ryan can remember when he visited me. Uh, never in my whole life I sold a direct child from Maxima. I put them all on my stock loft. Yeah, so uh, 
everybody talk from Uno, everybody talk from Extra, from Top Star. But like I say, sometimes are the hand more important. And last Maxime is the son, the direct son from Maxima. Mm -hmm. He was the last cock out of Maxima. And he is a famous breeder because he is father from, from my three best races, the one on the 13, the 88, and also um, in the one loft race two years ago in South Africa, um, Samuel Loft, the, the special uh, buyer from some expensive pigeons uh, on Pipa, uh, he was also uh, the owner from a direct youngster from uh, here from Last Maxim. So Last Maxim, famous breeder. Ryan, I think you have there the pearl of the auction in your hand. Because now. it's really special. I know it. I have time, 10 times thinking, shall I present that pigeon in the auction? Yes or no. But I can tell you with about 90,9% .9 guarantee from this cock, you bred winners. <laughs> he, is so, he is so beautiful. I know it. Normally, that was a pigeon. That was a pigeon for my stock loft. But it's with that pigeon that I can make the best publicity in USA. From there, I put them in the auction. Yeah. Now, 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 Leah. I told you from when we, whenever I've met Xavier, he never holds anything back. And people, if you're listening, everyone that's come to the open house on the weekend or come to visit these pigeons, when they put this guy in your hand, they say, this is a super pigeon. This is a super pigeon. He's exquisite. He's perfect in the hands. He's got the nice cast, the buoyancy, super soft feathers, muscle, nice eye sign on him, and he's so well-bred. And you want to know what? This is Xavier's pick of the sale. This bird's supposed to be with Xavier right now. Yeah, that's his pigeon. He is born, I think, in September or October uh, 2018. A very, very, very late pigeon. Eh? But normally, I must put them on my stock club. But I have the father, I have the mother. And, uh, yeah, from each of them, yeah, I have good ones. And, yeah, oh, he is famous. He is beautiful. <laughs> oh, he is beautiful. More beautiful than his father. I know it, but um, I'm sure when we are in 22 or in 23, you bred winners from this pigeon, really. Yeah, look, look at the flights, guys. Look at the ventilation in the flights. Look at the step in the wing. Um, buyers, don't worry. Xavier cannot buy the bird and take him back. I promise you that. He is awesome. I want to thank you very much for this pigeon. Uh, to the North American market, guys. This is a, a real gift just before Christmas. What a pigeon, Leah. I'm going to put number three back. Did we want to move on to lot number four? Lot yeah, I number think we four. can. Who do we have here? Lot number four, we have Sun Maxi Bijou. Love the name. Ryan's going to grab the lot, and Xavier is going to grab oh. the sire. To your lot number four let's have a look there we go this is a direct child of super breeding cock maxi bijou which xavier is going to show right there oh they look What's, identical they do look identical what is special about maxi bijou xavier yeah you can't you don't see it but this is this is my my beautiful spitting on my loft I talk not, I, I'm talking not from my best, but the most beautiful pigeon. It's really, he, he is incredible in the hand. Yeah. But yeah, uh, what must I say from that pigeon? Yeah. His grandfather from that pigeon, Ike was Ike Jr. Uh, that was from the like from Ike from Chris Hebre, national ace bird from Belgium, long distance. Yeah. And uh, he is sold for 250,000 euro. 250,000 euro to Mr. Xingwei 
in the China. Yeah. And uh, he make now, uh, he is famous in, in China. Uh, what can I say? He is the father of this cock that you have in your hand is the full brother of my best hand. The name is Darling, yeah, the 179. And fantastic combination. Normally I must racing uh, Darling also at, at the extremely long distance, but I'm afraid to lose her. And from there she winning, I have no idea about 35 to 40 prizes, but all at 400 and 500 kilometers. Uh, extremely good pageants for those distances. Well, see, I, 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 yeah, they got the same faces on them. Again, gorgeous muscle, gorgeous feather quality. Wing is beautiful. They got the fight to them. Look at the nice face on them. Yeah. Super, beautiful. super, yeah. super pigeons. And, and you know, you know what I love? We, we bring the parents up, or the fathers up, and they, they're like peas in a pod. They look all identical. Yeah. Beautiful. Super, okay. super, lot number three. Where do you guys go to bid? FeathersElitePigeonAuctions.com. Auctions running until Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, Northern Pacific Time. That is New York time. Wow, Leah. Moving on to uh, lot number five. Lot number five is Sun Artist. Son of top racer and breeder artist, which I believe Xavier is going to bring up artist right now so we can have a look. Artist is winner of first prize, Le Bourne Club Yearling, 750 kilometers, 21st National, Le Bourne, versus 3,925 pigeons, 18th Argentan, 787 pigeons, 287th Argentan, 6,628 pigeons, flying a distance of 525 kilometers, an absolute super breeder. Sire of 077, winner of nine prizes in 10 races. 085, a winner of six prizes in seven races. Top results from 150 to 650 kilometers. A new breeding star in the loft. Last son of Belgium 2010, 421 Inbred three times to top star. Our lot is Sun Artist, and Xavier's got an artist there in the hands. What uh, do we want to talk about? about artist what's special about him other than what i just read which is a whole lot <laughs> yeah <laughs> what must i say from artist <laughs> um he is in uh, yeah we talked from uno years ago i talked from um, yeah 20 years ago it was elvis uno it was pantaline yeah but now the new star is on my loft is artist it's uh, the first time that uh, I sold pigeons direct from artists and I put their three in those auctions. So uh, I make great publicity with artists because I think, I, I'm sure, he is for the future my, my best breeder. Yeah? Uh, a lot of uh, full brothers of artists, full sisters of artists, they're winning in the first 10 from one loft races. And he produced with every hand good winners, really with every hand. Now, I can tell you a small secret because I have also the nest sister from this, you have in your hands 763 yeah, from the years 18. Mm -hmm. I have in the one lost race in Portugal, it's uh, the Mira. The one lot race Mira, that was mm -hmm. a race from about 400 kilometers. I winning in the first, yeah, 60 prize or so in the final race. It was a youngster from his nest sister, the six, the, the seven, six, four, his nest sister. Mm -hmm. yeah. She is the mother from the, the winner in uh, the one lot race in Portugal. Uh, mm -hmm. So... And what is so special, I don't have any more the mother because the 050, yeah, the daughter from the granddaughter from Black Panther, she has died uh, last summer. She was not more anymore in good condition and I killed her. Yeah? So you have the last cock in your hand. I have his nest sister. She is on my stock loft, his nest sister, but she is 
not for sale for nobody. Now, and now, Leah, did I not tell you Xavier brought the best? I know that. Not only do we have um, lot number five, but also lot number six and lot number seven are yeah. all out of this amazing sire artist. Ryan is just going to bring up. Ryan, you want to bring up um, lot, lot six. number six? Uh, and, and, and you're not, you, you don't have to hear me talk about these birds, guys. They're all chiseled out of granite. They've got feather quality. They got muscle. They got vent bones. The, everything is like steel. I sign is perfection on these pigeons. And again, the balance. This is a a this is a no brainer to me. These are super amazing and rare talents right here. That is That's a Go ahead. That's it's a hand, a full inbred of uh, top star, a direct daughter of artist, but it's uh, three times top star in uh, that pigeon. Yeah? So it's very close inbred from top star line. Um, maybe you don't see it, but it's also the Yelena is inside on mother side, Yelena. And uh, Yelena is the mother from uh, international winner from Mr. Etienne Merlan. That was also a daughter of Top Star. Um, maybe uh, may, Mr. Merlin raced very well with uh, the Elena bloodline, but he he forgot to tell the name from the uh, from the father from uh, Elena. That was a direct daughter from Verstraete from the Top Star, and uh, I don't like that when he forgot my name on the pedigrees. Yeah? Uh, in Belgium, everybody knows Top Star, but not in the world, maybe. But uh, Yelena was also a direct daughter of uh, Top Star. Eh? Just the same with the mother of New Blixen from Gabi van der Nabele. Again, a daughter of Top Star. The same with uh, Eric Lambour, international winner. 2014 Perpignan was from the son of Top Star. In 2019, Mr. Eric Lambour winning the first national zone from Cahors, again from a grandchild of Top Star. So, now, if, uh, Xavier, do you have Top Star there or uh, no, no? No, Top, Top Star is an 03. Top Star was from 2003. I just realized that. Yeah, I just realized that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, speaking of Top Star, I mean, I can just run through uh, just a few of the results that we have here just to so everybody can get perspective on exactly how super a breeder Top Star was. Uh, super breeder, grandsire to winners of uh, three times first national winners, first national tool for Gabby Van Zinebiel, first national Narbonne for Tam Marlin, first national Prepignon for Eric Limborg. First National Chateau for Gabby Van de Nabil. First National Le Mans for Floor Ingalls 2018. First National Cahors 2019. First Provincial Burges for Gabby Van de Nabil. Third National Garrett in 2012 for yourself, Xavier. Fourth National Breve 2012 for Xavier. Fourth, fifth, seventh, and eighth National Montauban. And of course, uh, Top Star Son of Foundation Breeders Cadillac and Kathy. Um, just yeah. incredible. But. Uh... Like I say, on mother's side, it's also inbreeding from Top Star. So it's a three double uh, inbred from Top Star, this hen. Incredible. Hey, take a look at this hen. She's saying, she's saying hi, lot number six. The quality is here. The quality is in North America. And I challenge any auction site in the world to have a better collection than what you see here running right now on your auction sites. This is superior blood, super well bred. Okay. Man, these are pigeons. Beautiful. Shall we, uh, Ryan? Did you want to show lot number eight as well? Who is uh, Sun or, or Artist Two? Seven, you two? mean? Yeah, Sun Artist Two, lot number seven. Oh yeah. Bring number seven. That's yeah, here's a uh, direct son of uh, artist, but uh, those are then inbreeding from the Maxima hen. Maxima was a daughter from Second National Dax. And uh, this is also a special story. Uh, we bought that from uh, Holland Fancier, Mr. Kass van der Graaf. And uh, 
Maxima was a daughter from uh, Second National Dax. I have also a, a whole sister winning also Second National Dax. And the, the um, Diva is also winning Second National Dax. So uh, famous pigeon. And like I say uh, five minutes ago, Maxima, I don't say, never I sold a direct youngster from Maxima because I saw it only when she was six, seven years old that she gave really so much winners. And uh, when she was died, I put all the children on my stock lot for Maxima. Okay, yeah, wow. this is combination with uh, Junior from uh, Champion and uh, the Ike line. And also, uh, many times you see uh, a small part of Olala. I shall tell you later in those auction a small story from Orla. Wow. Okay. Wow. We're here at FeathersElitePigeonAuctions.com. We will uh, move on to number eight. Yes. Yeah. And Leah, the quality, I, I, people ask me and they say, well, how do you grade these pigeons and why do you grade them so high? Uh, it's just, you have to handle them. And once you start to handle them, you feel that refinement. You feel the perfection. I mean, if anybody is watching this today, really what you want to see is right here. Watch this. Xavier, yeah. I want you to put your hand up like this. Just your hand. Put your hand. Yeah. Right there. That man has what we call true pigeon fingers. <laughs> and here we have it in lot number eight, Leah. There we have lot number eight. This is uh, son of Champion Junior. And uh, Xavier, you have uh, Champion Junior there? Yes, yes, I have them. Famous breeder. Uh, yeah, he is now uh, more than 13 years old. But I have many, many good uh, uh, direct children from him. And it's again a son of Maxima. The hand that I tell you. Never I sold the youngster direct for Maxima. I put them all on my stock lot. These are not pigeons for 100 miles. Yeah. But once it's 250, 300, 400 miles, 500 miles, they are there. Yeah. But uh, I don't believe in, in selection from 100 miles. It's more uh, uh, the position from, from your loft. Uh, how is the wind? Yeah. But those are pigeons for 250, 300, 400 miles, 500 miles. And, and you, really you can well. feel it in the you can feel it in the body of these pigeons. These pigeons, uh, again, as Xavier says, you're going to start to see them kick in over 250 miles, 300, 400, 500, 600. The reason is it's the way they're built. These birds should bounce back super from a tough race. You feel the muscle, the quality, the feather quality, the eye sign, the buoyancy. You must look him. He is so intelligent. He is 13 years old and really, really a very smart pigeon. Yeah. And uh, his father produced uh, until he was uh, 17 years old. So maybe you have even so much lucky. You make maybe you buy a pigeon now and you have a good a good breeder for 10, 12, 13 years. Fantastic wow. wing also. Oh yeah. yeah. Very Same soft with this guy. Very Looking good good ventilation. Really, really good pigeons. Beautiful. <laughs> wow. That is uh, on. prior to your lot number eight. We're going to move on to lot number nine. Where do you guys go to bid? FeathersLeapPigeonAuctions.com. Auction is running right now. Just want to remind everybody, auction closes Friday night, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All pigeons are here in North America now. We have free shipping to the United States. There, we're looking at daughter Jano. Now, bef before we talk about this pigeon... I'm dying to hear what Xavier's going to say because I think this is one of the nicest hens I have ever come across. I, I know this season I think she's going to be the top hen of the year. This is my pick right here. Yeah. 
this is a couple uh, that is the only couple on my loft that I don't um, separate it. Those couple is always together. Jano with the nest sister of um, uh, the nest sister of um, yeah the son of Bijou. Yeah, um, I have here in the hand the father, and the father is a whole brother of my national winner from this year. Uh, <laughs> maybe you don't know it, but uh, I'm winning this year the first prize uh, by the yearlings um, on the national race from Belgium in Chateroux. And the name was uh, with sensation, a ham. And he is a whole brother of the national winner. This is the famous Uno line here for a part. Yeah. I can tell you these are not pigeons for more than uh, 450 miles is more than enough. But they do it extremely well. Also at 200 miles, 300 miles, really winners. Yeah. Also, the, the best example is this year, the national winner, yeah, Sensation, in Belgium, uh, that was, again, with a uh, whole brother from uh, this cock here. Yeah. And um, that was not a race like you have many races with uh, headwind or so. Yeah. That was really hot that day, extremely, uh, extremely weather, hot yeah. weather. Yeah. But these pigeons from Yano don't race on 500 miles. That is too much. 450 is more than enough. My other types, they do it very well, also at 500 miles. Eh? But uh, these are very good, 200 to maximum 450 miles, but really winners. And I think she is beautiful in the hand. Normally, oh. yeah. She is, a be she is absolutely beyond beautiful. That's not, beautiful isn't the right word for this hen. Uh, she's got that look. She Look at the balance in her hands. Look at the third bar on her, the eye. Well, You're smiling. Yeah, you want to yeah. buy her back. I know you do. <laughs> no, no, I, normally, I must show the mother because the mother have also this uh, birds here. The horns. Yeah. I, that's yeah, the hen yeah, I yeah, talk yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. See, Leah, I didn't lie. I told you. This hen that Xavier is talking about, the horns are like a tough on an elephant. They come yeah. out They come out like not yeah. far from her. I know uh, my dad, uh, Richard, when we were there, we looked at this hen. We literally fell out of the loft. She was and, that nice. And this is the daughter, eh? Yes, 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 yes. And uh, the mother is also the nest sister from number four from Maxi Bijou. Nest sister. She is uh, now the nest sister, the mother. Eh? So... And here is Yano, yeah, uh, Super. Famous, pigeon, famous pigeon, many, many good races. Well, I, I'm going to have to ask you, uh, for the next time we come live, uh, Xavier, we need to see the hen with the horns. We need to see her because when you see this hen, you yeah, will be, be blown away. You can buy only this one in the auction uh, because, yeah, those are so very good. Yeah. But like I say, not for the long distance. Eh? It's more for sprint and middle distance. Now, okay. James, James has a question, but I'm going to ask it at the end once we go through all of uh, the lots because he's asking, and I don't want you to answer now, Xavier, but when we're done, he wants to know what your picks, what your hen of the auction pick is and what your cock of the auction pick is. And and you can answer that at the end, okay? We're gonna, we will yeah. move on right. to the all next, right, right. The next yeah. lot, which is Daughter Cola, which is lot number 10. This is Daughter Cola, yes. direct child of Cola. Granddaughter of super breeders Olala and Top Star, and I think Xavier is going to bring Cola up, and so we can yes, 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 and talk a little bit about uh, the sire of your lot number ten. Go ahead, Xavier. Okay, this is the son of uh, Olala, yeah? and um, yeah, what must I say? This is the bloodline from 20, 30 years ago, the Olala line. Yeah? 
but I buy them back from uh, Mr. Lucien Stalls. Yeah? And um, maybe there is a small story from that line. On the, on the mother side, it's Top Star with Panther. The Panther line is also the famous line where uh, Mr. Verkamen, uh, famous uh, in Belgium also, but that's his with Panther line. It's here 25% in that pigeon. And Mr. Verkamen are extremely successful. The black ones from Verkamen, the Panther line, those are coming direct from our loft from 20, 30 years ago. Uh, sorry, 20, 25 years ago. But that's his original Panther line is Verstraten. But Mr. Verkamen, he don't write never our name. But I can tell you, this is the Panther line and by Verkamen. Uh, on father's side, it's Olala line here. This is son of Olala, yeah? two times first provincial. What's it so special? The same line is by uh, Mr. Gino Clique. Hmm? You know him? Uh, yes, Gino, Gino, Click, Gino, Gino Clique, yes. Clique. Yes, Gino Clique. And Gino Clique, I saw his catalog from his auction now, and I know it. He is so famous. Wait, here. Yeah. A, a photograph with Lucien Stalls. Yes. That's it for a part. That says for 25%. Also for Strata bloodline, but it's over uh, Lucien Stalls. Uh, and uh, Gino are, are very famous with those lines. This is the line from Lucien from Red Philip. Many first nationals in Belgium. This is also the same line here. This is Olala line, but Olala is for 50% Verstraten blood. Here, this is a bloodline from 20, 30 years old, but famous, not for the extremely long distance. It's only for 200 miles to 500 miles. No, 450, it's more than enough, but very clever pigeons, smart pigeons, and I make the combination with Top Star and Phantom. Well, I'm going to tell you they're outstanding, uh, beautiful. All the pigeons in the sale have extremely soft, silky, smooth, rich feeling, and lots of feathers. Um, and I, I can I just, see. I'm just going to interrupt here for a second because I know Xavier was saying how some people don't like to give credit where credit is due, but. We have a comment here from, uh, again, Stefan Hagenmuller. I hope I said the name right. But he has just posted just some of the fantastic, incredible results that he has received from Xavier's pigeons. And I'm just going to read yeah. them here very quickly. That's so everybody, yeah. so That's everybody has an idea of, if anyone's worried about, are these one loft race winners? Let me just give you some results here from Stefan in 2018. First place, Volcanic Fair Play, 500 kilometers, winning 10,000 euros. Mother, Original, Verstrata Line, Olala, and Extra. In 2019, fourth place, Volcanic Fair Play, flying 518 kilometers. Arrived with place three, a daughter from the winner, 2018, Verstrata Line, Olala, and Extra. And the best in 2020, First place, Pattaya, flying a distance of 530 kilometers, winning $125,000. Auctioned off for 103,000 euro. Father is the an original Verstrata line from Olala, Extra, and Maxima. Don't take yeah, it from us. Don't right. take it from Xavier. Ask Stefan Hagenmuller what he thinks of the Xavier Pigeons. It's right there in black and white, folks. Incredible. Go ahead, Xavier. A very nice, uh, a very nice reference there for you. Yeah, thank you very, very much. You know what? I love, I love the people participating, participate in this. Wow. Let's. Um, we're going to. I think. Uh, did you want to show? How about we just show uh, lot number eleven? And I know you don't have the sire, but I know you wanted to talk maybe a little bit about lot eleven, which is inbred Uno. Yeah. Brian's got him there. There we go. Go ahead, Xavier. Okay. Um, this is an exceptional pigeon, really. Uh, 
Yes, total inbreed from from the Uno line and uh, yeah, what must I say more? Maybe twelve uh, percent uh, Panther line, yeah? but especially this is for the sprint and the middle distance. Yeah? Uh, but the further winning, the first prize at six hundred thirty kilometers. That is about uh, yeah four hundred twenty miles. Yeah? But that is more than enough normally. But those are the old line from 10, 20 years ago. The really winners, yeah? the Uno line famous. And this is one of the last that I have from those bloodline, but totally inbred. I think maybe, oh yeah, I see it here. Six times Uno in the grand or over grandparents. Yeah? Famous pigeon. Uh, one or two days ago, you make an auction for Anik Houtin. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, for Enterham. Uh, I forgot to tell it, but I have seen it now. She made five and six years ago first prizes from Tule, first prizes from Suryak, races from 400 kilometers. That was with that combination with Top Star. Yeah. So uh, that was the Uno line with Top Star line. In combination with a, a small a small part of Gabi van der Nabele. Uh, I can tell it for people that have van der Nabele bloodline, those are the perfect pigeons for crossing. Hey, L and Leah, he he's is, super. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm he's super. Sure. He's he got, he, this pigeon has muscle on top of muscle on top of muscle. I described him two nights ago on the show as this would be my secretariat of a pigeon. He's absolutely awesome, beautiful. He has it all. One of the he best is, in the sale. Yeah. That was pigeon. He is born about September or October 18. Yeah, and, oh, he, but I, I, I know it. He's famous. A very beautiful wing, and you must give him a, a, a description. Yeah, but it's a famous pigeon. I know it. Uh, I hope to see that pigeon back in a few years when I come once in USA. Uh, uh, I can remember directly that pigeon. He is so beautiful. <laughs> I know. It. Wow. All right. You know what? I got to put him away because, man, I, I get goosebumps handling him. The last lot in our part one of the xavier versus strata online auction hosted by feathers elite is daughter champion junior ryan is going to grab daughter champion junior and i've got the photo up there granddaughter of champion from chris hebrick what is yeah. special about this lot number 12 xavier yeah um yeah it's again the son of champion junior my good middle distance and long distance one day races um, and yeah combination with uh, top star uh, really the best the best combination that I have yeah, for uh, for the for the distance um, and it's an opportunity because uh, the father is now 13 or 14 years old so maybe it's one of the last they come in auction yeah uh, and she is, I think, uh, I cannot so good remember her, but normally she is perfect from body, I think. Uh, yep. Yeah. But uh, it's again with a combination with Ike, the pigeon, they they winning um, the first national ace in Belgium, yeah, KBDB, and uh, he is sold for 250,000 euro, eh, uh, the grandfather. And is on this moment also one of the base pigeons from uh, children uh, by Chris Heberecht also. Uh, really distance pigeons, one day races, but normally those are pigeons also, they do it at a longer distance also, but I, I don't race uh, over the, the 500 miles. Uh, yeah, I, I like the one day races yeah? and it's, it's a combination when uh, it's a hard, hard race, they are any any time there. Never you they disappointed you. You don't you have no uh, bad experience with those pigeons. She's a and, super hand, super hand, yeah. Xavier. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Uh, wow. Like uh, what I can say, like uh, pigeons from uh, Champion Junior, from uh, also Champion Two, from the artists. If it is necessary, I have DNA from the parents and uh, from the fathers. Uh, so that's may maybe important for the buyers. Uh, uh, there is a possibility to give uh, the DNA from the champion, from Champion Junior, from the artist. Yeah, from the best uh, breeders, I have DNA, but then the the buyer was um, was paying for uh, the DNA test. Eh? But there is a possibility. Yeah, uh, these are pigeons. I breed them in the boxes, so there is no problem. And that is also a part uh, guarantee for the the new owners. I think. All right. Uh, what can I say more? Uh, I'm so, racing all uh, together with my father all more than in 50, 40, 50 years. And uh, this year we make again a good season. And uh, what is so especially, I race not so only with old birds or with, I do it all with every type of pigeons and also with youngsters, with yearlings, with hands. Yeah. Maybe uh, next time we give some more explanation about system or so, yeah. if you will, that, yeah, uh, it's no problem. And then um, you ask me a tip from what is the best hen or the best cock. It's for me really maybe, maybe, a problem. Yeah, not the, yeah, what would you, if you had to pick one hen and one cock out of these 12 lots, which one? Oh, uh, one hen, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, the number, uh, sorry, uh, number 11 is a cock, eh? Uh, yep. Wait a moment, eh? From yes, Cox, take it, take it from Cox, um, number five is exceptional because, and I don't have any more the mother from number five, and the nest sister gave by me one of my best youngsters this year. Uh, from Cox, three, five, three, five, and... Uh, and 11. Sorry. And from hands, um, yeah, number nine, especially, and number 10, especially. Sorry, yeah. But uh, that's okay. Special, special attention for number three and number five. Really, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, for me, it's just the same. I think. Uh, it's a small investment and maybe it's good for 10 years yeah and okay i wish all the new owners a lot of success and uh, if in the first two three months something happened with the pigeons you have always your money back or your uh, another yeah. pigeon in the place yeah? but uh okay i wish them a lot of success and uh, if uh, if the new buyer or everybody will uh, have um, information from me, uh, I'm free. Okay. Hey, hey, uh, sorry, hey, sorry. Hey, yeah. uh, hey, please, please hey, to ask me. Yeah. Xavier, you, you've done you've done a great job. You've knocked it out of the park. As I've said to the buyers, this auction, I stand behind all these pigeons. They're they're all a, a basically a ten out of ten. You are not going to go wrong with any of them. You've heard Xavier's picks, and like I say, Leah. I rarely don't say this. I'll double your money on all these pigeons. They're that good. They're that explosive. And they're going to add to your breeding program, I guarantee. Look at the names. And Leah, I'm going to ask you again to say the names of people, the high-end flyers throughout the world that have had Xavier Verstrata, Verstrata pigeons that have dominated. Leah, give me one more rundown on that. I have to pull the list up, but I think the best person to ask for um, references, top references, Xavier, I know you have a list a mile long of incredible results that other fanciers have achieved with your pigeons. How about you just give us a little brief rundown of some of the best? Okay. Oh, yeah, about references, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, I tell you there, um, Mr. 
uh, Geert van Renterham and Annie Coutin, they, they make uh, four or five years ago also a lot of success. But uh, like you know, they, um, there was, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, she, she, she sold those pigeons, but that was the combination. Gabi van der Nabele with uh, Verstraten. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then uh, I forgot to tell you, but uh, Mr. Uh, Eierkamp, yeah? everybody knows uh, Mr. Eierkamp, is his first national winner. Yeah? That was a 50% Verstraten pigeon. That was uh, the Meili, that was from his Zidane. Yeah. The father was a direct pigeon from me also. So Mr. Ayakam, I tell it's of course it's 30 years ago, but that was also an uh, 50% for Straten. The the Zidane was that, that was a mainly cock. And uh, Mr. Hebrecht have of course very good pigeons because we we do a lot of co-breeding with my best friend with Chris Hebrecht. Uh, maybe you know Bart Herings. You know him also? Yes. Eh? Famous yes. name. Yes. Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, he was very successful with the Whitcup Sylvester. That is again my panther line. Eh? The Whitcup Sylvester from uh, Bart Kering. That is again my panther line. Eh? Maybe you heard in the Netherlands, Case Bozua. Yes. Yeah. Case Bozua was very successful with all the pages direct from the Uno line. Eh? Uh, yeah, Etienne Merlan. Yeah, many times national winner in Belgium, uh, the Yelena, yeah, he winning uh, very many first nationals. It's 50%, uh, it's all direct, the daughters from top star. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah, okay. all over the world, uh, I, I forgot too much. Yeah. And and what what is 20 and 30 years ago, that's his history, but uh, we talk from what has happened now. And for me, my biggest hole is to bring in a lot of pigeons in USA because I will making so fast as possible a big name in USA. And there is only one way to send the best quality to USA, the best quality to Canada. You want to know what? We're going to wrap this up, but I'm going to say over the last 30, 40 years, history has repeated itself time and time again with you, Xavier. You keep producing the winning birds for everybody all over, and you will do it here in this auction as well. Uh, these birds are fantastic. I want to thank you for taking the time with us uh, this evening, this afternoon. It has been a pleasure. I want to thank you for showing us those awesome cockbirds, and I want to thank you for really hand-selecting uh, the very, very best from your loft. Uh, it's just been a pleasure. Okay. Uh, I wish uh, all the people in the USA and uh, Canada um, all the best for Christmas and uh, all the best for next season. And uh, we hope that uh, the COVID story is uh, next year after us. Yeah. Oh, so we, we, we hope thanks. so too. We, we hope so yeah. as well. And we hope you stay safe. I also want to thank um, your lovely family, your daughter, your wife, and um, your father. I know yeah. you guys work as a family, as do we. And it's so nice to see other families working together in the pigeon sport. Uh, you guys are an Thanks. inspiration. Oh, hello. Thanks. Uh, hello. They are my wife and daughter. So uh, they have also a part of the success. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, sorry, my father is now uh, next week 90 years old. Uh, he's sleeping now, eh? but uh, amazing. But okay. it's uh, you guys. Uh, you know, you're you're an inspiration to us. Um, congratulations on your national win this year. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this with us. I know that our buyers appreciate it. Anybody have any questions? Feel free to drop us a line. Get in touch with Xavier. We're always here to help you make informative bids. Where do you bid? FeathersleepPigeonAuctions.com. This auction closes. Friday night, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do not miss out on these 12 lots. Ryan, I'm going to let you finish it off. That's it for okay. me. Okay. Bye, Tori. Xavier, thank you. Remember, guys, 8 p.m. this closes. Don't miss the boat. Don't miss history because Feathers Elite Pigeon Auction is making it right now for you. Xavier, I kept calm. Now I'm too hyper. Now I'm too excited. I got to go, guys. Thanks for flying with me. We will see you in a bit, Xavier. Bye yeah. for now.